What's up, gals and pals? It's your boy Vino, and welcome back to 60 Second Cocktails. Ladies and gentlemen, if I am guilty of absolutely anything, it is for being nostalgic. I mean, I'm one of the most nostalgic people you will ever meet. I I'm always living in a different period in my head. Um, but one of the periods that I'm most nostalgic for is the 90s. Now, you gotta remember, this is my high school and my college years. So these are very formidable years, and I was having an absolute blast at that time in my life. I mean, it was the music, it was the fashion, the movies, the TV shows, everything in the 90s was unbelievable. As a matter of fact, you see, everything's coming back. Everything's going retro 90s now, right? Um, but one of the things I loved the most was to, you know, call my buddies up, you know, Louie, Frankie, all these fellas, and we'd get together and we'd go uh, to the clubs. And we were big club guys. I mean, we'd go two, three days a week. It, it, was the, it was one of the best things. Now, in the clubs, there was really kind of a small rotation of cocktails that people drank. And, uh, you know, you had your kind of like Midori Sours and your Apple Martinis and Cranberry and Vodka. You know, people didn't stray too much from that. Really didn't stray too much from that. And uh, one of the most popular, if not the most popular cocktails of the 90s, one of the ones that kind of exemplifies the 90s was the Cosmopolitan. Now, the Cosmo, as is also known, was made very popular by uh, the Sex in the City show. And I believe it was Carrie Bradshaw's favorite cocktail. So, you know, it, it'd be... It blew up. You couldn't make enough Cosmos, put it that way, right? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna make three different versions of the Cosmo. We're gonna make, you know, what's kind of like a precursor to the, uh, uh, the to the Cosmo. Then we're gonna make what's today known as the traditional Cosmo. And then we're gonna make a riff on the Cosmo that I've always wanted to try that I've never had before. So we'll try that one today, all right, folks? So make sure you stick around because we're gonna boogie down. All right, folks, so the first version of the Cosmopolitan that we are making is the one that we all know and love today, and this is Toby Caccini's Cosmopolitan. Now, he invented this in 1988 at the Odeon in New York City, all right? Let's look at what is in the sauce. The first thing we're gonna need is two ounces of a Citron vodka, okay? Now, he used, I believe, Absolute in his original version of the cocktail, but we're gonna be using some Smirnoff today. All right, so two ounces of a citron of vodka. All right, now the next thing you're gonna need is a one ounce of Cointreau, all right? So, uh, you know, if you have only like triple sec or, or something like that, I would say go ahead and use it, but these are the exact specs that Toby uh, um, used in his original version of the cocktail. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is one ounce of lime juice, all right? So I got my lime juice here. And again, we're gonna do one ounce. Now, now here is something that's, you know, for me, not exactly something I would normally do when I make a Cosmo, but in Toby's recipe and in many interviews that he's done, he has stressed the importance of using cranberry cocktail. Now, I normally use um, unsweetened cranberry juice in my Cosmos because I like to kind of build up the tartness. I, I'm a big fan of it, but Toby really recommends using um, cranberry cocktail, so we're gonna go ahead and use that version, okay? So this is really what you're gonna find anyway in most nightclubs or bars. They'll be using cranberry cocktail as well. I just happen to prefer uh, unsweetened cranberry juice, all right? So there's that, folks. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some ice to our shaker. Before we do that, let me just take out my ice, my glass, which has been chilling like a villain. And let's add some ice to our shaker. Okay. Now we're gonna shake that for about, um, let's get, come on, get in there, there we go. <laughs> 10 to 15 seconds. All right, folks, I think we shook that one up enough. Let's go ahead and pour it into our glass. I'm gonna double strain that just to keep out any ice shots. All right, there you go. All right, now that's a nice, healthy pour. Um, right to the rim, look at that, look at that wash line, oh yeah. So now let's go ahead and we're gonna garnish that with a lemon twist. This, again, this is all direct from Mr. Toby. All right, and let's just clean that up. Where's my knife at, all right? We're gonna go ahead and clean this up real quick. All right, I'm just gonna express it onto the glass. There we go. And then I'm gonna just do a little split in the middle. And we'll put that on the glass. Here it is right here, there we go, right there. What's going on, Vino? Come on, come on, Vino. There we go. <laughs> all right, sorry about that, folks, not too pretty. Anyway, folks, there it is, the Toby Caccini Cosmopolitan. All 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that cocktail to the side. I'm gonna try them all out at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around for that, all right? Now, the next Cosmopolitan that I'm making is called the Cosmopolitan 19. 34. Now this is one of the earliest references to any cocktail called the Cosmopolitan, all right? And it was found in the 1934 book, Pioneers of Mixing at Elite Bars. Now I've gone ahead and adapted the recipe uh, to a more of a modern style uh, palette. So we're gonna go ahead and look at what's in the sauce, right? We're gonna need two ounces of gin, all right? So this is not a vodka-based cocktail like um, Toby's version of the recipe. But you will see how he may have been influenced by this version of the recipe, okay? Then we're gonna do a half an ounce of Cointreau. So, you know, we're using Cointreau again, okay? So all of these ingredients are in the original recipe. I'm just going ahead and adjusted the specs. Whoops, <laughs> I'm not even drunk yet. All right, then the next thing we're gonna need is a three quarters an ounce of lemon juice, all right? So instead of lime juice, like in Toby's version, we're gonna be using lemon juice. All right, there we go, beautiful. And then now, instead of cranberry, uh, the, this version uses uh, um, raspberry. So we're still gonna have that berry flavor, but you're gonna have less tartness. This is gonna be more sweetness, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quarter ounce of raspberry syrup. All right, there we go. Excellent. And now we're just gonna go ahead and add ice to our shaker. First, I wanna do is take my glass out, which has been chilling like a villain. And then we're gonna shake that for about 10 to 15 seconds. All right, folks, I think we shook that one up enough. Let's go ahead and get the pouring into our, our glass. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and double strain that. All right, there you go. You got a little bit of an opaque color to the cocktail. All right, looks like we're gonna get ourselves a nice finish line, a wash line. All right, beautiful, there you go, there you go. All right, so and now in terms of a garnish, um, you know, look, there, they didn't, the, the, there was no real kind of standard garnish to this, so I'm gonna go ahead and probably use a little lime peel again. Um, and just, just because raspberries and limes really go well together, I'm sorry, raspberries and lemons go really well together. So let's go ahead and clean this up. All right, let's press it into, uh, let's press it on our glass. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and dump it. I don't feel like uh, getting all fancy with it and then it takes up time, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so let's go ahead and put that right there. And there is our Cosmopolitan 1934. All right, so the last version of the Cosmopolitan I'm gonna make it for you guys today is called the Cosmonaut. Now this was invented by the late Sasha Petrosky over at Milk and Honey, and it's said to be kind of a retort to the Cosmopolitan. So let's go ahead and look at what is in the sauce, right? The first thing we're gonna need is two ounces of gin. Now I consider this to be almost a, kind of a, uh, a combination of the breakfast martini and the Cosmo, and, and kind of like the Cosmo 1934. It's, it's an interesting uh, uh, riff of the cocktail. And I can't wait to try it because I've never had it before. And now we're gonna do a three quarters an ounce of lemon juice. All right. Now, in terms of what makes it kind of a breakfast martini is the fact that we're gonna be doing two tablespoons, or two bar spoons, I'm sorry, of raspberry preserves, okay? So I've got some raspberry jam here that I got up at the Hudson Valley. I love raspberry jam, so this is great. I've never used it in a cocktail, so it's always a first, right? Here we go, there's, there's one and two. Now you could put as much as your heart desires. I mean, you know, the, I see recipes calling from anywhere to one to three uh, um, bar spoons of it, all right? So now let's go ahead and put some ice in our cocktail. And then we're gonna shake that for, I mean, because it's got the raspberry jam, I'm able to do that for about 20 seconds just to make sure you get it nice and, uh, you know, liquefied, <laughs> all right? All right, folks, I think we shook that up enough. I got a little itch in my winking eye here, and uh, you know, I don't know, it was, maybe I've been winking too much today. This is my third wink of the day. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go ahead and get our glass out. Uh, we're gonna be serving that in a Nick and Nora, which I had chilling like a villain. And then with this, you're definitely gonna wanna grab a double strainer, a strainer and double strainer, all right? So let's go ahead and pour into our glass. All right, now my jam was seedless, so I shouldn't have any seed issues here, especially with not, now that I'm double straining. 
Yeah, so you see it's a bit of a slow pour into the uh, glass because of the thickness of that jam probably. All right, I think that's it. I think we got ourselves a cocktail here, folks. All right, so I'm excited to try this one, you know. I like Sacha Petrosky stuff. Anything coming out of milk and honey is always fantastic. All right, we're going to put that to the side. And now in terms of a garnish, honestly, it's one of those things you can put like a raspberry or something like that, but no standard garnish, right, folks? And there we have it, our Cosmo Knot. All right, folks, so there we have it, our three different Cosmopolitan cocktails, uh, you know, riffs and whatnot. And uh, let's go ahead and give them a sippy sip, right? We're going to start with the uh, Toby Caccini, which is considered to be the Cosmo uh, that we all know and love today, all right? Cheers. Oh, yeah. That's a Cosmo. <laughs> Look, the Cosmo is a good cocktail. It is tart. It is, has just enough sweetness. Um, it has got a brightness from the, uh, from the citrus. Um, you know, the vodka doesn't really add much to it, obviously, except for the booziness. But the, because it is a citron vodka, it does add some lemon flavor to the cocktail. So it's a big, bright cocktail. It's a very bright cocktail. Um, and I can totally see the appeal to the cocktails. It, it, it's a good cocktail, right? Now, let's go ahead and try the Cosmopolitan 1934. Jeez. All right, that's a very different cocktail, obviously. It's not nearly as big and bright, but it has some similarities at the same time. I mean, there's some overlap in terms of the, uh, the, the ingredients, but not too large an extent. You know, that triple sec or that quancho, you know, that you get that tartness from the quancho definitely helps here. The raspberry syrup is there. It's actually relatively subtle, but it does add some nice dark berry flavors to the cocktail. So it's, it's a nice cocktail. It tastes a little outdated, if I'm gonna be honest with you. And um, you know, compared to this, which tastes like a very kind of 90s cocktail, it tastes like the 90s, this tastes outdated. So let's go ahead and see what Sacha Pachowski's uh, Cosmo Knot is all about. Cheers. Oh. See, that's interesting. You really get the raspberry here, right? The, the raspberry jam comes through. I have to imagine, you know, everybody's, everybody's raspberry jam and raspberry preserves are gonna probably be a little bit different. On here, in my, with mine, they come through really nicely. Um, there's a viscosity to the cocktail that I really do like. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Now, look, none of these are my cup of tea but I could definitely see the appeal in all of them. Um, they're good cocktails, I would absolutely finish them. I mean, if someone gave it to me at a party in the 90s, I would drink them. <laughs> um, so they're really good cocktails, and if the Cosmo's your thing, or big, bright cocktails, kind of summery cocktails are your thing, then I think you're really gonna enjoy these, all right, folks? Now, if you like this video, please press like, please subscribe, and please share it with your family and friends, especially if someone you know is a 90s person, they might really enjoy this. <laughs> Anyway, folks, look, when life gives you lemons, you make yourself a cocktail. Cheers.